The movie starts on a boat out in the open sea. There are two fishermen on board having a good time sharing drinks and chatting excitedly about their big plan. They want to catch mermaids and sell them. They wonder if mermaids have hair even though they live underwater. As the story moves forward, we are introduced to another character, Dr. Bayer. He's riding on his own boat, a little distance away from the fisherman. He seems serious, often peering through his binoculars as if looking for something. The scene shifts back to the two fishermen, who are now actively working on their plan to catch a mermaid. They're busy throwing nets into the water, and to their amazement, they actually catch something big. Meanwhile, Dr. Bayer hears some commotion and turns his binoculars towards the fisherman's boat. He sees them struggling with something in their net as they haul it on board. Dr. Bayer can't believe what he's seeing. It's a real, live mermaid. One of the fishermen, Stanley, is frightened and panics. He grabs an axe and strikes at the mermaid. His friend rushes to help him, but the mermaid fights back fiercely. Stanley takes a rope to tie her up, but ends up getting the rope tied around his own arm. The mermaid uses this to her advantage, diving into the water and dragging Stanley along. In the mermaid's domain, Stanley is helpless. His friend on the deck tries to save him by shooting at the mermaid, but accidentally shoots Stanley instead. Desperate, he throws the net back into the water, hoping to catch the mermaid again. To his surprise, she gets caught in the net. By now, Dr. Bayer realizes he must do something. He jumps into the water and swims toward the fisherman's boat. As he climbs aboard, the mermaid sees him before he hides from the remaining fisherman. The fisherman, unaware of Dr. Bayer, approaches the mermaid with his axe and begins to cut off her tail. The poor mermaid watches in horror as he severs her tail and leaves her on the deck. He then tosses her into a corner amongst several fish like a catch. Dr. Bayer comes out from hiding as the fisherman points his shotgun at him. Quickly thinking, Dr. Bayer tells him that he's a psychologist and wants to buy the mermaid. They agree on a price of one million dollars. Suddenly, the mermaid's tail, which had been lying motionless, falls into the water as if it had a life of its own. The fisherman goes to check, and in that moment, Dr. Bayer knocks him out with a heavy blow to the head. He then uses the axe to make sure the fisherman won't be a problem anymore. Now in control of the boat, with the mermaid in his possession, Dr. Bayer's adventure is just beginning. The movie now takes us inside Dr. Bayer's special facility, which is like a hospital for women who need mental help. There are several women here, and they seem to have various issues. Interestingly, there's also a ghostly figure, a transparent girl wandering around. This ghost girl seems friendly. She approaches the group of women and talks to one named June. The ghost tells June that she thinks there's someone new in the bathroom. It turns out that June is the only one who can see and hear the ghost. June, not wanting to look weird in front of the others who can't see the ghost, passes the information as her own thought. This gets all the women worked up, and they grab whatever they can find to use as weapons. They want to see this someone. Their counselor, trying to keep things calm, tells them not to get carried away with June's imagination. The counselor goes to the bathroom first and discovers that the someone is actually the mermaid, the new girl. The counselor tells the group that they should be nice and make her feel welcome. Meanwhile, Dr. Bear's in his office looking at photos of the mermaid on his computer. There is also information on how many days have passed since he first found her. We learn that the mermaid has grown something like a cocoon where her tail used to be. Dr. Bayer decides to move her from the boat to his facility for more study. Back with the women, they hear high-pitched screams. The ghost girl wanders into a pool and sees the mermaid there. The mermaid gets scared of the ghost and jumps into the water. It seems like the mermaid can see the ghost too. The next scene, a nurse named Sandra tries to communicate with the mermaid. Suddenly, the mermaid starts using sign language, and Sandra realizes she can communicate this way. Later on, the ghost girl brings the mermaid a wheelchair. The mermaid is scared, but the ghost covers her with blankets to make her feel safe. In the next scene, all the women are in a group session with Dr. Miller, a fellow psychiatrist who can help them with sign language. 
She begins using sign language again, but Dr. Miller finds it hard to understand. He thinks she's saying there's a girl in the room no one can see. June speaks up and says she can see her too. And here we understood that the mermaid and June share the power of seeing the ghost girl. She explains that there are thousands of girls born on land who don't know they're descended from mermaids. We can also infer that June could be one of this type as she seems to share the ghost-seeing power. This information is so strange that Dr. Miller can't comprehend it. Sandra explains to him that the mermaid believes she is a mermaid. One of the women asks why she has legs. The mermaid explains that mermaids get legs when they're forced to live on land, or if their tail is cut off. One of the women, Reyna, doesn't believe her and spits on the mermaid, bullying her. However, the ghost girl comforts the mermaid, telling her that she believes her story. Meanwhile, the guards try to take the mermaid away, but she fights back. They use special equipment to stun her and put her in a straitjacket. Dr. Bayer wants to put her in a spooky part of the facility called the Lower Asylum. He tells a guard she needs to be alone, but the guard is too scared to go there. Dr. Bayer has to do it by himself. The Lower Asylum is very crappy and full of water. Dr. Bayer drags the mermaid through it. Back with the other girls, they're curious and worried about where the mermaid was taken. One of them, Linda, decides to find out. Inside the lower asylum, Dr. Bayer tells the mermaid that she shouldn't have revealed her secret about who she really is to the others, and that's why she's in the scary padded cell. The ghost girl is with her too. Meanwhile, Linda's sneaking around the facility, and she bumps into Dr. Bayer. She makes up an excuse, but Dr. Bayer knows what she's up to. Surprisingly, he tells her she can go down to see the mermaid. As Linda goes searching, Dr. Bayer watches her on his computer. The ghost girl yells out that they're in the cell, but Linda doesn't hear her. She peeks into another room and gets scared by another patient. She backs away and finds a door on the floor. She goes through it and finds a dark room with dead bodies and a scary dog. Unfortunately, the dog eats her. This scene reveals how evil Dr. Bayer really is. Meanwhile, once back in the girl's shared room, the mermaid somehow breaks the glass and makes an escape plan. The other girls follow her as they run into the woods. The nurse, Sandra, questions Dr. Bayer about where Linda is, but he lies and says she's in a nice place. In the woods, the girls see the mermaid standing in water. Most of them don't want to get in the water and decide to go back, but Reyna and the ghost girl stay. Even though Reyna was mean to the mermaid before, she now wants to help. She stumbles, but the mermaid catches her kindly. By dawn, the two are still searching for the mermaid who has disappeared. Suddenly, the ghost girl finds the mermaid with her tail grown back, lying near the water. She realizes the mermaid's tail couldn't grow back before because the pool water had chemicals in it. Later, we see Dr. Bayer driving with Sandra. They spot the mermaid in her wheelchair, and Dr. Bayer tries to hit her with the car. He wants to kill her so he can study her interior. But Sandra gets out of the car and sees the mermaid in her true form. She now understands that the mermaid was telling the truth about who she is. In the next scene, things get intense at the facility. The nurse tries to give the mermaid a shot to make her sleepy, but the mermaid uses her powerful tail to push her away. Meanwhile, in the girls' room, they are locked in and boards are being nailed over the windows so they can't escape again. Suddenly, the girls see Dr. Bear taking the mermaid away in his car. As he finishes loading the mermaid into his car, he shoots the guard that was helping him. The girls get really scared. Nurse Sandra comes to the girls' room and tells them that Dr. Bear is planning to keep them all trapped because they now know the mermaid's secret. She says Dr. Bear won't let anyone leave alive because he wants to keep the mermaid hidden from the world. Things get even scarier when a man who works for Dr. Bear tries to break into the girls' room to hurt them. Nurse Sandra tells everyone to be very quiet and not to move. Thankfully, the man eventually leaves. But then another staff member sneaks into Dr. Bear's room. She's shocked to find him sitting at his desk, staring at her. Suddenly, he shoots her with a gun. But then his gun gets jammed up and won't shoot anymore. The girls take this chance to run out of the facility. 
Dr. Bear goes into a bathroom, and one of the girls dash to the same bathroom because she needs to use the toilet. Dr. Bear points his gun at her, but it's still jammed. He then takes out a taser. He shoots it at the wall. The girl thinks he misses her, but it seems like he did it on purpose. The electricity from the taser mixes with some blood on the wall and shocks the girl. Meanwhile, Dr. Bear gets into his car where the mermaid is. The ghost girl is there too, comforting the mermaid and promising she won't leave her alone. Dr. Bear drives to his boat where he ties up the mermaid in a room. He tells her that he's going to do what he's been wanting to do ever since he first saw her, cut her open to see what's inside. Nurse Sandra shows up with all the girls in a car. She bravely tells the girls to stay put while she goes on to Dr. Bayer's boat by herself. As she enters the boat, Sandra hears a sharp, high-pitched scream from the mermaid. She follows the sound and realizes it's coming from behind a bookcase. Then Sandra starts moving books and suddenly finds one book that doesn't budge. It turns out this book is actually a secret lever. She pulls it, and voila, a hidden door opens leading to where the mermaid is held captive. When Sandra steps into the room, she has a gun in her hand, which she found on the wall. She's a little scared to see Dr. Bear reflected in a mirror, but then she remembers she has the gun, so she gathers her courage and shoots him. Back in the car, the girls hear the gunshots and think that they must help Sandra. The scene cuts back to the boat where it turns out Sandra only shot Dr. Bayer in the hand. The mermaid then uses her strength to tackle him. The girls make it onto the boat and help free the mermaid. The moment she is free, she slips through an opening in the boat, diving into the ocean where she truly belongs. The mermaid is free at last. But not everything is rosy. The girls are stuck on the boat and the door won't open. To make matters even worse, Reyna shouts that the boat is sinking because of a hole. Just when they're trying to figure out how to escape, Dr. Bayer gets up and pushes one of the girls into the water. He tries to suffocate her underwater. But guess what? The brave, powerful mermaid comes back and fights Dr. Bayer. She's powerful and beats him to a fight. As the boat keeps sinking, the mermaid uses her mighty tail to smash a hole in the roof. With a few strong slams, she creates an opening and everyone manages to swim ashore. On the beach, the mermaid crawls towards the girls. Then, something exciting happens. One of the girls remembers the mermaid saying that there are girls who are mermaids but don't know it. Curiosity takes over and she asks the mermaid if any of them are actually mermaids. Everyone is waiting to see what the mermaid does, and she points to June. Now, they understand that mermaids can see ghosts too. As the mermaid begins to crawl back to the ocean, the ghost girl comes close to her and starts crying. The mermaid tries to communicate with her using sign language, but the ghost doesn't understand. But then, one of the other girls interprets for the ghost, saying that the mermaid is telling her she will always feel her presence. It's a beautiful and touching moment as they say their goodbyes. The mermaid with all the grace and beauty glides into the ocean. All the girls are watching her swim away. Even Reyna, who's been the bully type all along, feels sad to see her go. But wait, there's one more scene. We see Dr. Bayer, the mean and evil man, floating alone in the water. Turns out, he's still alive, but not for long. The mermaid swoops in, dragging him deep into the ocean, making sure he can never hurt anyone again. And that's how this amazing journey comes to an end. With the moments of friendship, magic, and bravery, these girls and the mermaid stood together against evil. They found out secrets about themselves and formed a bond that was deeper than the ocean. Even in the face of loss, they found strength and hope as they watched their mermaid friend return to where she belongs. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll see you in the next video.